Hello, I'm Andrew Pritchard, and thank you for watching today's Northeast Regional Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. As you look at the last 48 hours of precipitation across the entire U.S., we've continued to see widespread thunderstorm activity from the central plains into parts of the eastern Corn Belt. And we've also seen scattered showers and storms across parts of the Northeast region here, talking about New York State, northward into the state of Maine. So check in with the radar here. Over the last 24 hours or so, we've seen scattered rain showers across parts of New York State. Uh, again, you can see those here, some thunderstorm activity across parts of uh, the state of Maine. And then we're also looking off to the west now across parts of the Great Lakes for our next round of shower and thunderstorm activity uh, that'll be pushing into the area during the day on Thursday. We do have a slight risk or, or a marginal risk for a couple strong storms in a couple areas of the northeast region here for the day on Tuesday. Uh, this would be our Tuesday outlook right here on the left. We're talking about parts of Pennsylvania and then parts of Maine here with, a, again, a marginal risk for an isolated strong storm. That risk on Wednesday shifts over to just the, the far southwestern corner of Pennsylvania here. And then for the day on Thursday, the 4th of July holiday, keeping thunderstorms in the forecast here across parts of Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, uh, and areas south and west from there. But those, the severe weather risk remains quite low in the northeast region. Looking at the forecast over the next 60 hours for instability on the left and precipitation on the right, Again, we see this very unstable air mass across the central U.S. from the, the northern plains into the eastern Corn Belt, uh, but instability remains quite low across much of the northeast region. That's why our severe weather threat remains quite low as well. We can go ahead and we'll just time this out here as we head through the day. On Tuesday, again, seeing some of that shower and thunderstorm activity flaring up across uh, parts of the northeast region here, talking about especially New York and Pennsylvania, and then north across parts of Maine. As we head through the, the afternoon here, uh, expecting widespread or at least isolated to scattered thunderstorms across parts of the, the central and eastern Corn Belt as well uh, off to our west. We'll go through the day on Wednesday now looking at a similar picture across parts of Pennsylvania looking dry across much of the remainder of the northeast region. And then as we head into the overnight and parts of Thursday again very isolated thunderstorm activity expected uh, across much of the northeast region but this is a, an instance where many people are going to remain dry uh, it's going to be an isolated few getting those pop-up storms delivering a downpour for the fourth of july holiday total accumulated precipitation kind of tells the story well as we talk about parts of the the central and eastern corn belt uh, getting into parts of the northeast region seeing this scattered to isolated thunderstorm activity popping up uh, a little bit drier here in this corridor uh, with, again, isolated thunderstorms expected across parts of Maine. So uh, a lot of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, areas south from there uh, look to remain dr mostly dry over the next two to three days. Where are we headed from here? Well, the jet stream, we've got a broad ridge across the central United States, and over the next seven days or so, we're going to see this kind of uh, fluctuating, and, and, and we'll go ahead and just play it out. You see what I mean? Uh, with, with no major ridge building in, no major trough, until we get to uh, mid to late next week, and we start to see a pretty well-defined trough, there it is, develop across the northern plains, and then perhaps shifting into the Great Lakes, again, mid to late next week. And that's going to uh, bring in a regime of northwest flow from the, the northern plains into the Corn Belt uh, and into the northeast region, which is probably going to be a cooler uh, pattern across the northeast region, and then possibly uh, a more stormy and more rainy pattern as well as we head again into, uh, you know, talking about the next seven to ten days getting out beyond that. Precipitation forecast here, the, the European Ensemble Model Precipitation Anomaly for the next six days highlights this corridor from the northern plains into parts of the eastern Corn Belt and parts of the southern new uh, northeast region here, talking about Pennsylvania and New Jersey. South from there, dry as you head north across New York up toward Maine. Uh, overall, not entirely dry, but drier than normal here over the next six days or so. As we look at the GFS ensemble model forecast for the next 15 days, the same thing. Uh, precipitation anomaly highlighting again this corridor from the northern plains into the eastern Corn Belt, including parts of the, the southern New, York, uh, New England region here, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, but overall drier across much of the northeast region for the next 7 to 15 days. We'll look at the instability forecast here on the European weather model, a uh, long-range forecast, and that again highlights the reason for this, keeping things very unstable and very active uh, across the, the, the entire Corn Belt, really. Uh, but as we look at the northeast region here, you know, you're seeing uh, not very much in the way of instability. Maybe as each one of these systems comes through every three to four days, we get enough instability for a couple thunderstorms, maybe a, an isolated strong storm or two. But overall, uh, the heaviest thunderstorm activity can ex uh, be, is expected to uh, remain just to... Uh, the east into the south of the northeast region, perhaps Pennsylvania and surrounding areas tapping in on some of that, but uh, overall pretty quiet across the northeast region. 
accumulated precipitation every 12 hours here, taking it uh, uh, into the beginning of next week. And again, you can see this pattern highlighted well across much of the northeast region, where each time a little frontal boundary comes through, we get a wave of showers and thunderstorms, but uh, overall remaining dry, unlike uh, this big swath you see here that's lighting up almost every day from the uh, northern plains into the central and eastern corn belt. We'll go ahead and we'll jump past this. We're taking a look at, at wind shear here, which is uh, you know, one of the ingredients we look for with uh, severe weather. We've got uh, kind of a, an opposite situation as, across the Corn Belt here from the central and eastern Corn Belt. Very low wind shear, but plenty of instability for these daily thunderstorms across the uh, northeast region here. We got a lot of wind shear, an active jet stream, but no instability really to work with. So that's why uh, the severe weather threat quite low and the, the widespread thunderstorm threat quite low across the northeast region over the next five days or so. Temperatures, where are we headed? Well, I mentioned a bit of a cool down. It's a slow transition, but uh, warmer here over the next five days. The five to 10 day forecast here trends back closer to normal. And then as we head to the, the 11 to 15 day time frame, so now getting beyond the first 10 days of July, expecting a, quite a, a sharp cool down now across the, the Midwest, much, much of the Corn Belt. Some of that does, uh, does extend into uh, the Northeast region here, but at least flipping back to a more average uh, pattern instead of this warmer than average pattern we're experiencing over the next five days or so. High temperatures for the next five days, just to finish it out, Tuesday, uh, looking at anywhere from the, the upper 70s into the mid to upper 80s across the region. Warmer for the day on Wednesday and Thursday. Here's your 4th of July holiday. Uh, high temperature forecast here across the northeast region with mid to upper 80s expected for most. So you get into the day on Friday and Saturday, looking very similar with, uh, with 90s or near 90 uh, for the day on Friday. But then Saturday, you're starting to see some of this cooler air work its way into the region with High temperatures only in the upper 70s in the north, uh, anywhere down to the mid to upper 80s in the south. As always, Eric Snodgrass will have an in-depth look at the evolution of the next one to two weeks in our Thursday morning ag forecast video, and I'll have your next northeast regional forecast for you midday on Friday. Have a great day.